hello everyone. We're um, going to start the webinar now. This is the presentation by Wendy Mons, who is a low vision consultant, lives in the Georgia area. And um, Wendy, I'm going to make you the presenter now, so you will have a button on your screen to begin to show your slides. And we are asking that everybody mute their phones by pressing star six. Um, and listen to Wendy, and then we will um, have time for questions uh, at certain times during the presentation. So, Wendy? Hi. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but I'm so glad all of you have joined us. Um, I've been, um, I am in Georgia, and I have been in the low vision um, profession for, for over 30 years. Um, and what I want to do before we even um, begin is, I definitely want you to um, I want you to have my um, have my e email address, which is um, wmons at magnifiers dot com. It's wmons at magnifiers dot com, and basically I'm giving you that because if there's other information that you want to have, um, like what resources that you can go to in your area, I'd like you to go ahead and email me. Um, after after the webinar, and I'll be glad to, and I'll hook you up with all of the resources that are in your area. And I won't be able to do that individually today, um, but I'll be glad to do that. Everybody needs to know what all the resources are. Um, this this um, Wendy. Yes. Uh, could you press slideshow on your PowerPoint? It's it's in the top um, bar. Um, uh, in the menu. Okay. There you go. Good. Okay. Yes. Okay. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over what it is, what a low vision clinic is, because if you have if you have a visual impairment, it's very crucial that you that you go to and attend a low vision clinic, um, and that's really what that's what this what this uh, webinar is about. Um, and what we're going to go over is what is a webinar, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what is a low vision clinic? What's the difference between going to a low vision clinic and going to a regular um, eye care professional? Who should go to a low vision clinic? What should you expect? What are some common eye disorders? What are what are the devices that will help these disorders? Um, where, where are my clinics located? But that's in Georgia. And what do you usually need in order to make an appointment? And then other services and resources that are available um, nationwide to the, to the visually impaired. Um, and the reason why you need to go to a low vision clinic is because they will um, they will test you using using different types of charts, um, and they're going to make sure that your vision functions better. They may not be able to get to um, to correct your vision. They're going to try that first, and then they're going to then they're going to see how they can make it function the very best that they can. Um, the difference between a low vision exam and a regular eye exam is that they're going to use different charts. You're going to see an eye doctor first, and he's going to he's going to try all kinds of stuff and really take his time to do a very very good refraction on you, and then use some some kind of creative um, optics. On you, maybe bioptic telescopes or maybe uh, telemicroscopes, things that you've probably never heard of before if you've never been to a clinic. Um, and then a low vision therapist is going to work with you with, with hundreds and hundreds of different devices. Uh, these are, this is an example of some of the low vision charts that they use. Um, the, chart, the chart on the left is the big E chart. So I've ha I have here in front of you a picture of three charts. One chart is your regular um, the Snellen chart that they normally use, and then the middle chart is called the Lighthouse Low Vision chart. And then the the chart on the far on the far right is the um, that's the uh, it's, it's, that's the Designs for Vision chart, and that starts with the 700 line, as opposed to the other two charts that start with the 200 line. I like portable charts that you can actually grab in your hand, you can keep the lights on, and you can walk closer to the person with a low vision chart. So instead of you being in a dark room and you having to keep your head straight, um, looking at a, at a projected chart, which is really hard for most people to have low vision, 
a regular low vision chart, you can move up closer so we can get your acuity at two feet or at one foot. Um, that, does that make sense? Can I take some questions now? Does anybody have a question about that? No? OK, then I'll go on. Um, who should go to a low vision clinic? Um, really, if your vision is adversely affecting your daily life, no matter what it is, whether you're having trouble reading, you're having trouble sewing again, you're having trouble um, driving, you're having trouble seeing at a distance, um, you can't read the writing on the TV, or you have, or you have a visual diagnosis um, like PXE or macular degeneration or glaucoma or diabetic retinopathy, you probably want to hook up with a low vision clinic. Um, what should you expect? Um, first, first, you're going to see a low vision doctor who's going to take the time to really work with you. And then you'll see a low vision specialist who will have all kinds of magnifiers and electronic equipment and telemicroscopes and really high power glasses and to show you how to use these devices and see which ones are going to work for you. Um, some of the common eye disorders. Um, if you have if you have a fairly fairly good visual acuity, you're still driving, you're still reading, you're still doing everything, but you're just having a little bit of trouble, maybe 20-50 or 20-40 visual acuity. Um, and I have a picture there that kind of shows you what, what that would look like. It's pretty clear, kind of hard to tell maybe the difference between that and regular vision. Um, some of the devices that would help you, maybe the, the problems that you might have might be glare, might be reading, might be reading um, the, um, the letters on the television set. And so for things like distance, for trying to read the TV, you can either sit closer, just getting closer to any, anything, to reading or to your TV set or to a person, it's directly proportional. So if you sit twice as close to the TV, you're going to see it twice as good. And sitting about three to five feet from the TV is fine. It's not going to hurt you. You could actually put your nose on it. It wouldn't hurt you. Um, if you can't do that because of the way your living room is arranged or whatever, then you could use some sport glasses, um, which I have a picture up on the screen there. Um, one of the most important things that a lot of doctors forget to tell you about is direct and proper lighting. Um, you want to make sure that your light is directly on the paper or on whatever or on the task, not going through a magnifier. It's got to be directly on it and not coming from the ceiling. So you want the light to be, you know, maybe maybe two or three feet from the um, from what you're reading, or it could be closer. You could have it four to five inches away from the material. But very, very important, you want direct and proper lighting. If you're using a magnifier, it needs to be between the magnifier and the paper. Um, magnification might help a little bit. Low-powered, big big magnifiers um, that are like three to five inches in diameter. Um, so you want a low-powered magnifier might help you, a little bar magnifier, even a page magnifier might help. We're talking with somebody with pretty good vision, 2050, but they're just complaining a little bit. Um, another thing is I have a lot of doctors who call me and say this person has 20-20, um, but they're having a hard time reading. And, um, and the doctors kind of don't believe them or they don't, you know, because they're, they're testing out 20-20. But it could be that there's a color in the spectrum that's bothering the person. And so um, I always go over light, light colored filters. It could, be, um, it could be yellow or it could be a light gray or a light green. And then sometimes just a little bit higher powered readers. Um, maybe a plus, plus two or plus three, um, and sometimes that'll help. Here's just, this is just an example of some of the filters. Um, there's a gray filter. I mean, there's, it's just regular on, on, your, um, on the left. There's a, pic, there's a little picture of some shelves with magnifiers and stuff on it, and an eye chart, and um, that doesn't have a filter on it. And then to the right, I have a yellow filter and an orange filter. This is to kind of show you the difference, how it, it enhances contrast. This is, an, this is an example of somebody who might have um, 2080 visual acuity. Things are getting a little hazy. Um, if you look at the eye chart, you can read the top, the top two lines, the, the 2200 line and the, and the 2100 line. Uh, but the next line is getting pretty tough, the, 20, the 2080 line. Um, you can see everything, but things are getting a little bit fuzzier. 
And so with 2080 vision, you might want to um, do some of the similar things. You want to sit up closer to the TV. You want to use some sport glasses for distance. Um, you definitely need some good lighting. If you're going to have a little stronger magnification will help you. Maybe a plus um, probably a plus uh, two, three, or four is going to help you a lot. Or even a, actually a three X or four X is going to help you a lot. Um, again, you want to look into the filters, see if yellow is going to help you or light gray. You want to cut out the glare and heighten the contrast. Um, go ahead and get you can get some also some readers like in a plus four, plus five, plus six might help. Or an optivizer where you can just put that over your glasses and you can go anywhere from a plus two to a plus ten on that. Um, the stronger you go on an optivizer or glasses, the closer you have to get. So your field gets a little bit more limited. Um, again, you want to look into the to your filters. Um, but always, for outdoors, you want to make sure that you are wearing sunglasses, darker glasses than what I have up here. Uh, but we'll go into that later. Now I have up on the screen um, 2200 visual acuity, which is legal blindness. So basically, if you have 2200 or, or worse, um, it could be 2400, 21,000, whatever it is. Things are pretty blurry. Um, and I'm not talking about any blind spots now. These are just, just kind of if you have, um, if you have blind spots as well, but this is really kind of blurry vision is what I've put up on the screen here. Um, and what some people have told me, um, you, you, you know that, that there's something there, but you're not really sure where it begins or where it ends. Um, really hard. It's like looking through a fog all the time. Real exhausting. Um, and some of the uh, some of the visual aids that'll help. Um, you can have a um, a low powered magnifier, let's say a 4x or a 5x, to give you some distance, um, but to maybe see the picture on a canned good. So you could see the picture of um, you know of some carrots or of some peas as opposed to maybe beets, um, or you can see pictures of your family. Um, but you want kind of a lower powered magnifier just to see a. To, to see a picture and to, or to see large print. Um, so maybe, a, as I said, probably about a four or a five. You're probably going to need pretty high-powered magnification to reprint like on a, me on a medicine bottle um, or even for standard print. So you're probably going to need about somewhere between a 7x and a 10 or a 15x. So you're going to have to try those out. You definitely need some light on them, so lighted magnifiers are probably better. Um, also, I guess the, the electronic devices are going to be your very best bet for reading and writing. If you're going to school, you definitely need that. Or if you're working, um, you definitely want a closed circuit TV. Um, if you have some vision at all, and you can, then you can, then you can adjust your your magnification from three power to sixty power. Or you get a bigger screen, you can even go up to maybe you know eighty power. Um, they're now their little portable handheld electronic devices, um, and that helps. That's wonderful because you can take those. They're their little pocket size. You can stick in your purse, um, and you can take those to the store, and you can read. You know, you can read the price tags, or you can go into. Um, uh, you can you can read menus because it has a. You can change the lighting in the background, and usually they go from about maybe a three power to about a a ten or fifteen power, depending on which device you get. Um, another picture that I have up here is, is of a man doing gardening, and he has some um, close focus telescopic device on. Um, those extra the max TV, the max detail is what he has on. So they're kind of like um, they're kind of like teles they're kind of like telescopes or um, binoculars that are head borne. And he can do you can use those for the computer screen, or you can use those for reading or writing, or in this case, gardening or some kind of craft. You can also use your electronic devices for crafts as well. Um, and then don't forget your lighting. Um, binoculars for distance are wonderful. You can get binoculars anywhere. Um, and if they're four power, that just means that you're going to see things four times closer. Um, and um, if things go, are moving, they're going to be four times faster. But, but, they're de but you're also going to see it four times better. So, any kind of binocular is going to help you. Um, there are some that have a zoom on them, which I kind of recommend. I like the small ones that have a zoom on them. 
Um, and then you just want to look for things that are in large print, like cards or watches or telephones. You want to make sure that, that they're big or that they're talking. Um, and I'm going to go back to the filters again. Um, again, you want to make sure that you check out your filters for indoors, the lighter ones, like the light gray or the, or the oranges or the ambers, and then for outdoors. We'll, we'll go into that later. Um, here's just a picture of a little girl when she's using a magnifier in white. Um, but what I really wanted to show was um, an example of a central field defect. Pretty clear around the periphery, but there's a central field defect. This is kind of what happens with macular degeneration. Might not be quite as clear around the edges, um, but you have a central field problem. Um, and then I'm going to. These are some of the tricks to help with a central field problem. Um, if you just remember, bigger is better, brighter is better, blacker is better, motion is better, off-center is better, and in your field is best. And I'll show you what the difference. So here's bigger is better. I have the different size um, zeros, and the biggest one is probably easiest to see. Brighter is better. You want a lot of light, a lot of direct light. Central field loss tricks. Um, black is better. If you have all different colors, red is almost impossible to see. Yellow is really hard to see. Um, black is always better. Or black on yellow, black on white. You've got to have really good contrast. Um, motion is better. Anything that's moving, you're going to see it better. Um, that's why a lot of people with central field effects, if they're um, walking along the, the carpet or the, they're walking along the room, they'll see something in their side vision. And although it might be teeny tiny, they'll see it. As soon as they turn to pick it up, though, it goes into their, their um, central field, and it's lost. It's like it wasn't there. So a lot of people, a lot of relatives around, around people that have central field defects think that they're teasing because they might see this little ant crawling next to them but they're having a hard time seeing their food in front of them. And I always explain to them if the food was on a conveyor belt, um, you could see the food better. But um, as long as it's moving, you're going to see it better. Um, the other thing is that you want it in your field. Um, and so I have a picture up here of um, kind of like a bunch of arrows going around a big circle. Um, and what a lot of people do is they'll write like a telephone number They'll put the first three numbers of the telephone number up at the top of the circle, and then the rest of the number around the bottom of the circle, and basically so that it's in your visual field, not in the center where you have no visual field. Um, and again, you want. And then when you're trying to look at something, don't look directly at it. Everything falls into your into the uh, the black hole, as I want to call it. Um, you need to look around that black hole. So it's like if you're looking at your food, instead of looking directly at your food, you, might have, you want to look to the left or the right or up or down. Um, and yet you should see your food a little bit better. Not wonderful, but a little bit better. Um, again, we're back to this picture with the little girl with her magnifier and light and um, normal picture. And then here's a picture of tunnel vision. That's the opposite. We have pretty good clear central vision but your peripheral is gone. Um, and these people have a really hard time walking around. They might see pretty clearly once they get something in their, in their field. It's hard to find it. A lot of people with um, diabetic retinopathy or glaucoma will have these. They'll have a really nice field somewhere, but the rest of it's pretty, pretty mushy. Um, and tricks that help with tunnel vision would be using a reverse telescope, uh, direct light, closed circuit TV, Line guide for reading, mobility, 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 and sweep your head left and right, side and side. Um, if you take a low-powered telescope, any of them, you can. Um, these are some tricks for tunnel vision, and you turn it in reverse with a two-power, and you turn it in reverse instead of looking at it to make everything two times bigger. You turn it around; it makes everything two times smaller. Um, and what that does is it puts everything in your field. So it'll take all the stuff that's in, a, that's in a round and it'll put it right in that central vision. Um, and that's just a quick, easy little trick. Um, you definitely need direct lighting. 
the next thing is um, the closed circuit TV helps. It helps for just about anybody. It's always the easiest way for reading and writing because um, you don't want to make it too big if you have a central if you have a peripheral field lock um, because if it gets too big, it goes out of your field. But at least it gives you the good contrast. Um, using a line guide so you don't lose your place, or just using your finger, and that would be good really for anybody with a visual problem, or even not with a visual problem. I would tease about it that when you do, um, when you go back to doing um, like a speed reading, they always tell you to put your finger back on the paper. So um, that's always a, and I, was, I wish we had never told people to take their finger off the paper, but you put your finger back on the paper, your eyes will automatically follow your finger. And then you can go as fast as you can just by moving your finger. So you definitely want to put your finger back on the paper, no matter what your visual problem is. Um, and then mobility, especially with somebody with, um, with, with tunnel vision, um, you really want to look into getting mobility instructions. It will teach you how to walk safely uh, with a cane. And um, even if, you're, if you don't want to do that, it will also teach you how to walk safely with another person. And if you're caught in a place where you're by yourself and you can't see very well, you'll know what to do. So definitely getting a mobility, an orientation mobility instructor to teach you how to walk properly and safely is a wonderful, wonderful idea. Um, the other thing you can do with, a, uh, with the peripheral field loss would be to sweep your head back and forth to make sure that you're, you're, you're seeing, kind of using your head like a cane, and you're seeing what's to the left and to the right. Um, additional devices that will help just about anybody, um, kind of things we've gone over. The magnifiers, telescopes, binoculars, um, high-ed reading glasses, lighting, filters, electronic telescopes and magnifiers, talking devices, and writing templates. Um, the first picture is stand-in-hand magnifiers. Um, again, the bigger the magnifier is, the weaker it is. The smaller it is, it's usually stronger. So um, in this picture over here, um, everything on the left of the screen, the two big ones, the two big rectangular magnifiers, um, those are about a 2x or plus 8. And those that are far to the right, um, those are um, on the top, it's an 8x. And the one on the bottom is a 5x. Just to give you an idea of what happens as it gets, um, and then you have to get closer to it as it gets smaller. Um, so here's a little girl using a magnifier, and I'm just this is just an example. You've got to get the light under the magnifier onto the paper. Um, a man using a stand magnifier, and again, you want to make sure the light gets onto the paper. Um, and then there's illuminated magnifier, so you don't have to worry too much about it. It already has the light in it, and it's going to be right on the paper. Um, these are binoculars and telescopes of pictures there. Um, I like binoculars better because they have a better balance to them. Uh, whether you have one bad eye or not. I always think it's just easier to use. Um, but a lot of people like the telescopes because they're, little, they're, they're portable. You can just stick them in your pocket or wear them around your neck. Um, and they come in all different strengths, anywhere from a 2x to probably a 10x. Um, and this is just an example of a lady wearing a, a pop-up um, um, telescope. She can just flip it, flip it up. The next picture is some high-end glasses. Um, and, and glasses, um, for high ads, you can go anywhere from a, you know, a plus one or two in the drugstore to um, some of these are, are, are 12x or a plus 48. So um, we're talking really high stuff, high powered stuff. Um, if you were reading normally, um, your, your reading distance, and there, I have a picture of a man here reading, and his reading distance at normal distance would be about 17 inches. Um, as you start using high ads, so if you use some high ad reading glasses, um, the next picture he has about a plus six or plus eight on, and he's going to be about eight inches from the paper. Um, and then if he has, if he has like a maybe a four x, uh, really high powered glasses or a six x, he's going to come to about two or three inches from the paper. Um, then, of course, the most important and the first thing I always talk about when I'm in a clinic would be the lighting. You want to make sure your lighting is direct. I think we talked about that a little bit. Um, then the next thing are filters. And you want the light filters, the grays and the yellows and the ambers, maybe for indoors. Heighten your contrast. Those are also great. The yellow ones are wonderful for nighttime to heighten contrast and um, or on rainy days. 
the um, for for um, for really for really bright days, you want to you want to try some glasses that are going to protect you, and that's really important because um, you, you must wear sunglasses in the sun always, always, always. Um, it seems to to slow down the progression of whatever disease you have as long as you wear glasses. If you don't, the sun definitely speeds it up. Um, and you, it, whatever you like the best, you just want to make sure it's 100% um, UV coating. Uh, and um, and here's just some examples of the filters. So here's just no filter. I have a picture here with no filter. Then I have like a, a gray filter on the picture, and it just it just kind of calms things down for people that have like glaucoma or cataracts. It'll take away some of the glare. The yellow filter um, is probably is really pretty good for um, TXE or macular degeneration or um, retinitis pigmentosa, because it really heightens and it's great for nighttime because um, it heightens the contrast and reduces glare. Then there's the orange filters that really in enhance the um, enhance the contrast even more. The red filters um, are actually really good for people that have red green. Uh, blindness and on the picture here, and I'm going to go back one. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but on the very top shelf, there's like a red vase with some yellow and red flowers on top. And when you put a red filter on it, the red vase becomes white and the green becomes black. And I'll go back again and show you the difference there. Whoops. Um, and that's just kind of an interesting thing to know. A lot of people that are in show business and if they can't see the red green lights, they'll have one as long as they have brown eyes. Blue eyes they can't do. If they have brown eyes, they can wear one one red contact lens, and that'll help them see the difference. Um, and then there's electronic magnifiers, which you know are definitely the best and the easiest for everybody. Um, and they've been around for 50 years, but um, I always call them just a variation on a thing. They've gotten better and better and nicer and more streamlined, and now they're portable. But they sure make things a lot easier to read and write with. There's some portable ones out there now. So if you're doing crafts, you could use the one I show over here, which is the Acrobat on the on the left. And they're portable. You can take them from class to school to work. There's some headborne ones, um, like the Geordi and the Maxport. So you can actually, wherever you look, you can adjust your size. Um, and then talking devices, talking, there's talking everything now. There's talking watches and clocks and computers and um, calculators and talking remote controls and talking temperature. Um, so really just about any, there's even a talking um, uh, microwave. So um, if, that, if that's easier, then you need to do it. Whatever's easier for you, that's what you want to do. Um, simple little things like, Writing templates are wonderful for writing letters or check writing or um, addressing envelopes. Um, I'm going to skip where it says my clinic's in Georgia, but um, but but I'm going to now I'm going to go on down to some of the um, no matter where you are, these are the wonderful um, resources that, that everybody can take advantage of. These are the national resources or some of them, American Foundation for the Blind, the American Council for the Blind, which is a consumer group, and the National Federation for the Blind, which is also a consumer group. Um, what it, if there's a, a school for the blind in your state, then that's a great place to ask for the resources. Um, Veterans Administration always knows what the resources are, and if you're a veteran, they have fabulous um, resources. Um, also, your superintendent of schools, there's always a um, silky, uh, a person in charge of um, of students with with special needs, and they'll know what your resources are as well. Um, I also have on here my my website, which is magnifiers.com, um, which you could you could go onto that and ask me uh, where your resources are. And that's the end. Are there any questions? Wendy, I have one question that's written in. Um, this is from Mark. He can't see in low light, so he can't drive at night, and he wonders if there's any help for that. Um, Mark, the only thing I can, I, I don't know what your, 
what your visual acuity is. Um, I know that the yellow filters will help a little bit, so you probably need to try that. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. I, I guess I would definitely ask your, you know, ask your ophthalmologist or optometrist um, if he has any suggestions. It might, a telescopic device might help, but I'm, I'm not sure. Sometimes there's a trade-off between making things bigger and making things brighter. So um, that might be something for you to look, look into. And if you want to email me, I'll give you some resources in your area. Okay. If any of you would like to ask a question, remember to press star six to unmute your phone. Is there a way we can get, a, get your uh, slideshow? We will have that available for you. We at PX International will have that available for you with the audio, hopefully, um, at the not right at the end, but within a couple of weeks. But just from the website? Yes. Are there any other questions? If you are unable to speak, you can also um, type your question in on your panel, if you can see that. Any more questions? Well, thank you for joining us. Wendy, thank you very much for presenting to us today. And um, you. pardon? You're welcome. It was a pleasure. I hope it went OK. <laughs> yes, we will send your uh, contact information out to the attendees so that they can contact you directly with questions.